Okay, so relationships and sort of relationships, romantic relationships, dating. Actually, it's quite a big thing for spiritual seekers. You know, this thing on doing spiritual work, uh, and especially if you're doing a lot of spiritual work, should you be in a relationship, should you not be in a relationship? How fixated should you be in a, on a relationship? How much action should you take towards a relationship? I mean, you know, like one of the things, there's so many different aspects, isn't there? One of them is like, don't do, just do your spiritual work and God will provide a relationship if and when it's required. You know, just hand, hand it over. Or it should be like, should you be taking lots of action? Should you like, you know, go on 10 dating websites? And um, how you see relationships will depend on your level of consciousness. You know, the, the lower your level of consciousness, the more you're going to be at, a, an, at an effect of your inner programming your genetic programming or your animal nature. So the lower your level of consciousness, the more it'll be a thing that's needy, desperate, uh, feel a, a lack of peace, you feel like something's really going to be missing from your life until you get and it'll be quite a persistent, strong energy. Like, you know, uh, there's, you know, uh, I know for myself it's like, well, you know, uh, a relationship would be you know, like I'm, in, I'm a food addict, so it'd be like, oh, when I'd have that donut, I'd be happy. And it'd be like, when I have a relationship, then I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. You know, that will fix me. And um, from the Course in Miracles perspective, we talk about the, the thing of specialness or the projection of glamour onto things. And the Course in Miracles goes very much into stripping away the projection that anything is magical or glamorous or special or in 12 steps, making anything your higher power. You know, because as soon as you do that, like I project glamour and happiness onto a donut. You know, and it would be the same thing with a woman for me. It's like, oh, if I could, you know, if I can go get that bag of donuts, then I'm going to be happy after the donuts. Or if I can get that girl, then I'll be happy after I get the girl. So it's the same projection that's happening in mind. So when you've got a, when you haven't done much spiritual work, these are like strong cravings. Uh, or neediness, or feeling of loneliness, or feeling like, uh, and also there'll be a projection that in the future when you get the perfect one, then you're going to be happy. So that's like a low level, and as you start to do spiritual work, for me, uh, I, you know, like, any time, you know, like loneliness, you can s sit with loneliness, like I don't feel, you know, I think nearly... 99.999% of the time I never feel lonely. Yeah, uh, so it's like if you feel out all your loneliness, you don't feel lonely. You know, um, like uh, a craving for someone, well if you sit with the feeling of like, I want someone, then you don't. But I still do have things like fantasy, you know, or projections of magical qualities. And when I have like fantasy or projection of magic, magical qualities onto a woman, then I have to do like all of the things to pro to strip out that projection of magic, like oh you know this person would change your life and you'd feel happier, mm -hmm. which is like you know and that's like it, and it's, you could say it's the first thought or the second thought that does the damage, you know. So so, so a lot of the things I remember actually I, I remember now what I was going to talk about. Both Muji and Hawkins had something to say. Muji in a different context and Hawkins on this topic. Are, are around uh, around sort of relationships. Now, Muji said this wonderful thing. I thought he was, you know, at the height of his teaching, when he said, like, when you go through Brixton Market, you know, Brixton Market with all the shiny, you know, the shiny stalls and everything, in Brixton Market. Like, you should go through Brixton Market, and then uh, what was it? Something. Somebody comes up to you and says, "Oh, do you want to meet for a coffee?" He says. You should say you should you should say to them something like, oh, "Sorry, I can't stop now, because you're moving through like you've got diarrhea. You know, you're moving through the market like you've got diarrhea. You haven't got time to f fixate on all the shiny objects in the marketplace." And I thought that was a great metaphor for like dating as well. Probably not. I'm probably going to get that bastard for this, but it's like when you give your attention, like the Course in Miracles teaches, like you know the mug. Is as, is as meaningless as the camera. And you give the mug one second, and you give the camera one second, and you give the plant one second. Like everything is equally, is, you know, God is equally in everything, equally. 
when you sort of like fixate on something, you know, like if I was to, to, to sort of stare at a woman and then fantasize and then think, oh, it's going to be so wonderful if this woman liked me, then I'm giving it a lot of airtime mm -hmm. in my head. You know, and I'm building up the fantasy, and that's how the attachment or the projection of specialness or glamour starts. So I'm building up that, that projection within my thing, which is going to mean, you know, which means at the end, at some point, like someone was mentioning that this world is transitory. Everything is, everything is transitory and everything is changing. And actually, you know, the source of happiness is within. You know, we can project happiness onto donuts, onto the opposite sex, onto money, onto career. But actually, it's all, this is all transitory. And the person, people are changing all the time. And people die and get, you know, all kinds of things. Go, they go off with other people. So, actually, that reminds me of what I was going to say. So, that's the thing of, like, even if I had, I don't, I mean, I don't have a girlfriend, but I'd be consistently trying not to build up an attachment to that person. You know, like, even if I went out on a date, I would try and... Uh, you know, look at the girl, say, okay, you're as meaningless, not, not la out loud, but, you know, you're as meaningless as, you know, and then look at the lamp for a second, there's this lamp, and then look at the plant. So, you know, you, you, when you're in these more higher spiritual states, it's more like you're witnessing everything and everything is equally beautiful. And when you go more to the ego state, you tend to get more fixated, like in addiction, like you're just, I'm just thinking of donuts, or uh, you know, or if I'm love obsessed, I'm thinking of just this woman all the time. See, so you want to break that. Um, so when you're getting more into the ego, you have these special projections. When you're getting into higher states, like you know, everything is equally beautiful. I mean, but it does bring up this question of like, well, how do you have a relationship? And well, it's not actually. It, it's not really about that. It's like in the twelve steps we talk about, and this is what happened with me with food you're placed in a position of neutrality around it. It doesn't mean you can't have a relationship with food, but it means it's lost this excitement as a thing that fixes my life. Because, mm. you know, so, I mean, I can still eat food, but I don't get, like, obsessed and look forward to and craving mealtimes. That doesn't happen any longer. So the intent and the motive behind that action is different now? Well, I mean, there is no intent or motive yeah. behind it because mm -hmm. it's like totally neutral. Yeah. It's like I don't have a motive around grass being green. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. It's like it's meaningless. But actually, so as you're getting to these higher levels of consciousness, it's like presence is the mm -hmm. gift. Whatever is presently showing up is equally as beautiful and equally lovable. Like, you know, like if a person's in front of you, you witness that person to be exquisitely beautiful. But if you're in the park, you know, the mm. squirrel that's just bouncing along on the, on, on the branch, it, you know, is it, and you know, like, I remember once Hawkins saying this thing, like, you know, because he, he's, you know, he's not identified with his ego, so there's just only the present moment mm. in every moment. So it'd be like, and he used to be, he used to be obese, you know, and have sugar addiction, all kinds of things. You know, he'd be eating a sandwich and the phone would ring, and this is one of his DVDs, and he'd pick up the phone and he'd speak to the person. And then he'd forget he, he had a half-eaten sandwich, he'd just carry on with his day, just totally forget it. So that's what it'd be like, you know, if you're at a high level and you, you've, got a, you've got a partner. Mm. You know, you'd be fully present with the partner, and the second they're gone, they're gone. Mm. You know, you're in the next moment. Mm. There's no, like, when you're an act, when you're an ego, you have to say, oh, I miss her, I miss her, I miss her. Mm. Uh, I can't wait till she's back again mm. tomorrow or something. That doesn't, that doesn't happen, because you haven't got that projection of that person being... But you, so you start to have more impersonal love. Mm -hmm. You have love, yeah. Would you say if you're not experiencing that, yeah. then you're not ex you're not present. If you was, if I was in an interaction with somebody yeah. on a romantic level, and you're not experiencing that yes. deep beauty and seeing something another human being, that you're not experiencing presence. Well, there's levels of consciousness. At the highest level, everything is exquisitely beautiful, mm. equally beautiful. Mm. Like when I, after seeing Muji, I had a white light spiritual experience. And I came out of that and I was in, and there was the witnessing of bliss in every moment. And everything was just beautifully, exquisitely magical. The trees, you know, the trees were beautiful, the sky was beautiful, the buildings were beautiful. And I remember going onto, in, in, onto the Victoria Line in Brixton after I'd met him. And I, was, and I was witnessing the people on the tube, and I was just crying. 
because every single person passenger on the tube was just so stunningly beautiful mm. and there wasn't even there was nothing sexual about it you know every single human being was just like an exquisite piece of art and you're just crying looking at them mm. they were just all that beautiful so it, there wasn't anything so you just see everything as being so stunningly be stunningly beautiful that everything makes you cry so um, so that's, that's so that's how you go on to the higher levels and as you go into the lower levels it becomes a bit more like an addiction thing where they become the you know the thing you know when it comes to extreme addiction if they were to leave you for another person you'd think well there's no point in living I'll commit suicide mm -hmm. oh don't leave me you know oh yeah I won't be able to live without you if you leave me you know uh, well you know and you jump off a bridge so that's like the opposite and end of the thing where you've fixated so much on them. So the thing of, um, sorry, that's a bit off tangent in terms of dating and taking action around. I think there's nothing, you know, if I was going to do, if I was going to go on, uh, if say I wanted, you know, everything's a different level of consciousness. Like if I wanted to meet a person, you say that if you wanted to meet a person, it would depend on your level of consciousness. If you wanted to meet a person, you could, you could take action to meet them, but I'd be constantly doing the transcending work. So, like if you're on a dating website or you've got an app for dating, you want to be like transcending, going to the observer of that or cancelling your beliefs around the, there's a magical person that can fix you. Mm -hmm. Then as you're showing up for the dates, I'd be like, well, you know, this, per this person is equally as meaningless as the table, is equally as meaningless as the thing. And trying to be, or being in the observer or the witnesser of the date. So as soon as you go into the ego, you're starting to make a story up about the other person. You know, oh, this would be a really nice person. I hope this person likes me and doesn't reject me, or whatever it is. So you're in your head. But then you can go into being the witnesser of your thoughts. In being on the, in being on the date, in being in the witnesser, you see, being the witnesser, and then actually it won't, it won't be, uh, you, I mean, you, you, you'll, you'll be much more present uh, but it won't be like this addictive roller coaster, mm -hmm. you know. Because if you go in your head, and you, you know, when I'm in my head, then I'm trying to like, oh, she gave me a compliment. Oh, I feel so happy now. Mm -hmm. I got a compliment, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, she didn't give me a compliment today. Oh my God, you know, I can't. You know, I don't like her as, as well. So it's like you have this drama when mm -hmm. you're in your head. So as soon as you go to the observer, it's like she made a compliment. She didn't make a compliment. It doesn't matter. You know, you're still present. You're enjoying yourself. You see. So those would be some of the things I'd be doing. I'd also try not to get attached on the day. I'd try and stay in this observer or make it meaningless. And then you're going to have, I mean, on a, on a sort of thing, like, uh, it's like when you're in these higher levels of consciousness, that, that is a great gift to any, other, any person you're with when you're present, mm -hmm. you know, than when you're in your head in a huge roller coaster. Also, as you go to the higher levels of consciousness, you tend to attract what level you're at. Mm -hmm. So if I'm like, you know, drinking like five bottles of vodka and, uh, and you know, having like ten, ten bagels before I meet a go on a date, mm -hmm. probably the only person who could stand me would be someone who's having ten bottles of vodka and is not present and is like, you know. So yeah. you want to be, you know, so there is going to be, um, you know, the relationship fellowships, you know, if you're like disconnected, you're going to choose someone who's a nutcase. Yes, addicts you know, attract addicts. Addicts attract addicts. So you know, like you know, uh, you know, like if you're a nutcase, the only person you'll have as a date, it will be a nutcase that will stay with you. So, so, <laughs> so, you, so it's good to like if you're in the observer and you're like present and you're happy and chilled out, and they go, there's not enough drama. You know, then it's good, let them go. You know, that's mm -hmm. good. You know, and eventually you'll get someone who's serene, peaceful, and present. That's going to be a good thing. Or it doesn't really matter. You know, if you're a nutcase and they're a nutcase, then that's fine as well, mm -hmm. in a certain way. So there is like the thing of levels. You know, like for me, I always think uh, if you're feeling relatively serene, I guess as a rule of thumb, if you're at a high level of consciousness, and the desire for dating occurs, I think that's a good time. I think if you're a total basket case and you want to do dating, you're probably better to do some spiritual work and calm down a bit before you start doing the dating because you're going to attract something to do, uh, do with that. But um, at, at certain levels of consciousness, 
you're, you're going to tend to attract people who are going to, res, you know, pull up the stuff that you need to get pulled up in you. I always think the problem with romantic dating is the connotations it has, mm -hmm. you know. Like if I'm having, you know, like with my, when I have my pet pigeons, like, you know, it's not, it's not like I'm, exp you know, you tend to get more into, it's easier to be more in a place of unconditional love. Or with family, it's easier to be in a place of unconditional love. But I think society programs are so much around romantic stuff, mm -hmm. like, the, you know, that there's so many expectations and outcomes around, you know, you, I mean, almost the thing of romantic things is you're expecting a fix. You know, like if I get a, if I'm helping someone in a 12-step program, it's not like, you, you know, you're, you're programmed to be of service, to be present for them, to give without expecting return. But I think this, I mean, romance is so charged in society. You know, it's like, you know, you're not really, you're sort of looking to get a, you know, like a, in, you know, like the way I'm programmed, it'll be like I'm looking for a good deal, you know, or I'm looking for someone who can like be a kind of like a drug, you know, to sort of make you happy or sort of fix your life or whatever it is. So those, I think, are, are going to have, you're going to have tough lessons when you go into uh, a romantic thing. Mm. Now for me, I think that, you know, this, this year in, you know, in, in, in September, it will be sort of uh, 12 years that I've been sort of in committed relationship with my partner and through that period, half of that period, I was very unwell. In the beginning when I met him I was very unwell and then um, it's sort of halfway through that I just start getting better and yeah. start, you know, getting into recovery and stuff and I just thought, I just think to myself, only up until very recently, um, we're probably talking about maybe a year that I thought that if we ever parted that, you know, my life would be unmanageable because I don't have a family here, I don't have a support network here, there is nobody to look after my son, you know, I would suffer with this, with that, with the other, the darkness would come, suddenly that person would move out after a decade in the same home together, you know, all of that stuff and I was like, this is much better. You know, when you kind of have an argument or you think this is the end, you think, oh, this is much better, you just stay here, mm -hmm. not here. But today, I can honestly say, really, with kind of God in my heart, that that I could come back home now, he could have his bags packed. And with all the deepest love I have for him, I would be happy to wish him well and to, you know, and to, to see him go and that I don't have that attachment there anymore. <coughs> That's the state I would like, mm. you know, which is, and actually that's true unconditional love. Yeah. Mm. Because, you know, the connotations of romance is that you need the other person as yeah. a fix. You know, don't leave me, you know, I need you, mm. you don't, don't, don't leave me. But actually true, true love, like you'd have for a kid or you'd have for your pet dog or mm. a rover or something, you want the best mm. for them. You know, it's not about you. It's not about you getting a reward from them. You want the best. Like, mm. oh, you, if Rover's going to be happier in that house, you know, go, go. I want you to be happy in that house. So that's not, there's nothing wrong, you know, so that, that's like, you know, when you watch romantic films, that's not what it's about. You know, it's mm. like, they wouldn't be happy if suddenly, oh, like, I found someone better for me. Wish me well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's more like, you bastard, you know, I've got to get a knife and... Kill the both of you or something. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna. If you I can't have you, you know, you, you can't be with anybody. <laughs> so that's more the Hollywood thing you sort of associate with the thing. But actually, you know, that is the thing. And you know, the thing that deflated romance for me was the thing that I often share with um, what I had from Muji and and Romanis. Like, I have all this thing. Oh, this magical woman's going to fix me. But really, that's just my thought all my years of watching Hollywood films and Disney films and all of that stuff is that, you know, that it's going to be like, life's going to be so amazing with a partner. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and all of that's programmed in me. So it's like, actually, if I do get a partner, then my happiness in getting a partner will just be, now that I've got one, my ego will shut up for a few months mm -hmm. or, or a year or two. And then I think, oh, everything she does is so wonderful and oh, she, it's, life's so much better with this person. But as soon as my ego starts to do, you know, like, well, she doesn't pick her socks up, yeah. and uh, yeah. actually she's not, you know, she's not my type, really. And the other one I saw is actually, mm. probably if I got that other one over there and I didn't have this particular one, mm. I'd be happier. Mm. So I just know that that's, that's what would happen, yeah. you know. So 
I'm sure you, you get a period, I mean, classically they call it the honeymoon period, isn't it, really? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, now that I've got to you, I'm so happy. And then after a year, you start to notice, because your ego starts to, it's not that they've changed, it's that your ego, now that you've got the thing you wanted, so your ego shuts up, and then everything they do is wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I like the way you leave your socks on the floor, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then after a year, it's like your ego goes, oh, yeah, have you noticed that about them? Have you noticed mm -hmm. that about them? Mm -hmm. And then actually that girl over there, she looks a lot nicer than this one. You know, so, so you dump this one and that model over there is a slightly better model. So, so I know my ego would do that. So it just might, well, if I do the spiritual work, that's going to be the core work. Then whether I have one or whether I don't have one, I mean, it's kind of a, you know, when you, do, when you get to high spiritual, you realize it doesn't really matter. Your happiness is not dependent on whether you have one or you don't have one. I mean, you can have one. I mean, it's not like you shouldn't have one. I mean, you can have one, but happiness doesn't come from the other person. Mm. Uh, but it depends on your level of consciousness. I mean, there's nothing mm. about having, you know, a loving reciprocal relationship. But the higher you go, the more you realize it's more like wherever you go, you're happy and you're present. And the lower you are, then it's more like, well, I'm, ha you know, I'm only happy when she's in the house. Well, that's a bit funny, isn't it, really? Mm. You know, and as soon as they're not here, I'm, I'm lonely and I'm unhappy. So you know there's something going on there with it. So those are the things. It's not to say that, you know, for people who don't want to go to advanced levels of spirituality, have a relationship, and, and that's okay as well. It doesn't really matter. Even if you're an addict and you go out with an addict and that rocks your boat, fine, you know. Or if you're quite spiritual and you enjoy their company and you're slightly attached, that's also fine as well. Or if you want to go to the higher levels, you can still have a relationship, but you're, you're, you're staying present mm -hmm. and you're not trying to get attached. And it's maybe like that, you know, or you might be going for very, very high love. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you just want to love the person, but there's no attachment. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you, you know, if they said to you one day, look, I found someone better, you know, to feel like you really have love in your heart for them. Like, mm -hmm. I wish you all the best. I really do. And that, for that to be genuine, that's, that's like... That's getting, that's like, that's what I call saintly love. Mm -hmm. That's saintly love, that's very, very high love. Or if you're enlightened, then you're just, you're just true to presence. And no, nothing is, is magical. Because everything is equally, you know, everything, as the Course says, everything is equally as meaningless as everything else, or God is equally in everything. Like, you know, my love for this person is equal, is equal to my love for a squirrel in the park. Mm. You know, it's not like my love for, my girlfriend is more and my love for the squirrel is less. You know, that's how you're going when you're getting to the, going back. So they're all different, you just see it at different points in it. But for me personally, because I come from an addiction background, you know, the projections of mag magic and specialness, you know, and also the truck, you know, for me as well, the thing is if you make a huge attachment at some point in your life, it's probably going to be tested, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, I'm so happy because you're in my life, I'm so happy because you're in my life. You know, she might get run over, you know, she might leave for another guy or who knows, you know. She may get a promotion in the middle of Africa or something, I don't know. So then, uh, and then that attachment, you suffer, you'll suffer the attachment later on. Whereas if you get to, if you get to unconditional love or if you go to enlightenment and stay present, is you, you'll enjoy the relationship, but the relationship won't be special. That sounds, doesn't sound very nice, does it? Mm -hmm. uh, it's like all of life is, there's an exquisite love in every moment, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. Like when you're with the person, it's going to be magical, it's going to be wonderful. But also when you're not with them, it's also going to be amazing as well. I think that sounds better than mm -hmm. how I framed it before. Mm -hmm. you know, that's how I feel. I feel like the experiences we have as parents, yeah. the experiences we have traveling together, or you know, even now to go so far as to take a two-day trip in the car across the Europe to go to my home country instead yeah. of a two-hour trip on a plane. And that's for me unheard of. I want convenience. If you're scared of planes and you want to travel in the car, go, go ahead. You know, and I'll just go on a plane. But now, experiencing those things with the boys and you know, and, and it's wonderful, it's wonderful. But our life is also wonderful without that yeah. as well. Yeah. So it's equally wonderful. It's just a different type of um, experience. Yes, that, so that, that, that's very, very high. 
you know, and that, that is going towards saintliness or enlightenment. Oh. And it, and and. Uh, I'm off. Um, <laughs> well, that, that that's no, that's extremely high. It's very very right. rare, you know, because a romantic relationship is is a special relationship. Mm. So it's like you, you know, nearly no one would wish 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 your partner well if they suddenly turn up and say I found someone else. You know, it's more like you but you know you you I want to kiss swear words on camera. But anyway, um, okay. Mm -hmm.